pretty geeks, and welcome to this week's stuff that nobody taught me. And this week we're going to talk about periods! Yay! And you have to say it like that. Otherwise, it's just like, you know? So, we're going to cover the when, the why, the how, like to deal with it, because how do you, eh? And then some added general information if I start rambling, which is normal. So, when. Plus or minus a year or two, the average range is 8 to 15 years old, which is a massive range. But, so you know it's normal if you get it early, and it's normal if you don't get it so early. But if you start feeling like you can want to be in relationships and you're getting mood swingy and some other types of relationship urges as well, um, that's a pretty good indicator that you are beginning to go through puberty as well as if you grow some new hair in new places, develop new body parts, but it doesn't exactly say that you will get your period right away because in fact it can be up to three years after say your boobs start developing that you'll actually even have a period to start and it can take a year to a year and a half for your period to actually start and kind of set its own schedule and be regular this means is that you might start your period and it'll be like oh monarchy we're here and then all of a sudden it's, it's not there and it'll take a few months to come back which is totally normal because there are actually a lot of reasons why you would miss your period whether you're on birth control whether you've gone through a lot of weight loss or quick weight gain or if you've been very ill or if you've been very stressed if it was new and of course if you are pregnant it is always a good idea however to go get it checked out if you've missed it say three months and it is still new you can get it checked out uh, if it's you know been regular for a while um, maybe after you realize it's been a little bit light yeah and a way to kind of figure out if it's been late or not, a great way is calendar tracking. And I don't mean you have to write it in your planner or put it into your Google Calendar, but there are actually apps, which though they're not 100% accurate because the human body likes to throw things at you, it can help a lot in at least getting a general idea of when you should be starting something and kind of the times to be on the lookout for because even though it's not going to be the same for everyone every single time there are going to be some indicators that you personally pick up the majority of the time and these symptoms can have a really wide range everyone feels them differently but for the most part they kind of suck so they can be cramps bloating food cravings weight gain you can end up with sore or swollen boobs like you could actually go up a cup size a cup size and a half you never know um, you can get increasingly sensitive to alcohol um, so if you are going to drink drink with a buddy system um, night sweats fatigue you'll find yourself probably wanting to sleep a lot um, which can also be tied to low iron so make sure you take your multivitamins during your period especially some women actually choose to take a prenatal multivitamin specifically during their period um, there are the aloha poops and the breakouts. So if aloha poops are the fun name given to the phrase period shifts, BTW. 
and they're called aloha because it tends to come at the beginning hello and the end goodbye of your period where you can feel constipated for the first few days as things start cramping up and moving but it's very likely that you'll end up with diarrhea in the beginning and at the end of your period and this is totally normal because your uterus is trying to get the stuff off its walls. Which brings us to the what the hell is happening. Basically, you are losing blood and tissue from your body. The tissue is a lining that forms inside your uterus. There you go. Ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus. It's actually like the size of a small plum, not even the size of a fist. Okay. Um, when it expands to its full size, it's going to get about fist size. And this is not counting when you're pregnant, because obviously it expands quite a bit. But just during regular times, it's going to expand slightly to nearly fist size because the lining is going to form all around it. And that's so when your egg comes out of your ovary down the fallopian tube and makes it into your uterus, if it's fertilized, it's going to burrow into the little wall and that's where a baby would live. However, if there's no baby, your body's like, well, I don't need this. And it like squeegee sponges your guts inside. And yeah, it hurts. And yeah, it sucks. And you're gonna be moody. And kind of the misnomer for it is that girls are only gonna be moody in the period. A, sexist. B, these cramps and moodiness and even some spotting can occur outside of your period as well, but it's all part of this. So you can have what's known as pre or post menstrual syndrome, which is when you get that moodiness, that cramping, the headaches, the nausea, yada yada, before or after your period. When it's before, it's premenstrual, and a lot of the times it's when those hormone levels are dropping and everything's kind of getting ready to do its deed. Afterwards, the cramps are going to have a different purpose. They're actually going to be up in your ovaries themselves, so that's just why you tend to get the higher cramps at that time. Um, so this is actually another time that an app program could actually be really helpful um, if it has a note section where you can talk about what your symptoms were during which points so that a you can help track them and you can be able to feel out where you are in your cycle as you get more used to it but also so you can keep an eye on your actual emotional levels because a lot of these times they are going to be really emotional and they are really going to suck. But if it gets to a point where you find that you need help to get out of these, you can't quite shake off the slump or it doesn't pass within a few days, or if it reaches the point where you're thinking of hurting yourself or another, please get help. And you can get help with dealing with your period and all of your sexual health problems either from your regular doctor as you move to family care or primary care, or you can do so um, through Planned Parenthood, which will be in all major city areas, and you can find either online or through a phone book. And these are something that over the age of, I believe, 16, maybe 14, you should Google, I don't remember, is it 16, 14, 16? I want to say 16. Um, you can make these appointments without a parent um, if you're not comfortable with a parent being a part of these decisions, which is understandable because this does occur. Not everyone does have a family background that they can do so with, and I hope that you do, but if you don't, you can make these appointments on your own. You can apply for um, sexual health specific health coverage, um, even if, you know, you're still in high school. So keep that in mind. So how do you deal with this? Outside of taking a multivitamin, making sure that you are getting enough rest, which means napping 
if you have to during the day, do so. And you can try different yogas and low impact physical activities because even though it's a kind of a kick in the ass to get started, it will help you feel better. Except, of course, in the scenario that you have something like PCOS, which if you're worried about, again, talk to a doctor and they will let you know um, what would be best for your body and if um, other exercises might be more appropriate. There are also the other things you need for your period, which obviously is to contain it somehow because we do not free bleed everywhere. It would be so difficult to get out of your pants. Really difficult because that would be a lot of pants. So your options are going to be tampons, pads, cups, sponges in their even special panties just for these. Most commonly you are going to use pads or a tampon. And what you use is really up to a personal preference. Many, many girls begin on the pad and may graduate to a tampon and some just are not a fan of the way that it feels or, um, you know, it, it just uh, it doesn't feel right to them um, or they don't need that much security or they're worried about it for other reasons um yeah but it's up to you my darlings so real quick we're gonna cover how to do these here and whoop, Tim's pretty easy you can either tear them I always push it because they always come out and this is a plastic applicator they are the most comfortable way to do so you can also do cardboard, which are fracking painful, in my personal opinion, in, in the majority opinion. Um, and there are also kinds that don't come with an applicator that tend to be more tightly packed and have a string on them and a small base for you to fit your finger into. However, the traditional applicators would be these plastic ones. So you can do it sitting, squatting, standing, kind of whatever is most comfortable for you. Personally, I like sitting and cranking my leg up just a little bit like on the side of your tub or if you have a step stool. And you're actually going to put it into your vagina straight up here until you reach about this finger hold. And there'll be a little ridged area and see this one's got cute flowers. A lot of them now have grips to them. and you're going to push what is called the plunger up and this guy is going to stay and then you pull this part out. This guy stays inside the body, the string hangs on the outside to make it easier to remove and he will break apart and expand while he's in there and do -do 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 -do, absorb any excess fluids and the chunks will kind of just stay there because yeah, there are chunks. When you're ready to remove you relax your muscles and pull outwards. If it feels too tight or if it feels dry, then you are using one that is too absorbent for your body because they come in multiple absorbencies, light, regular, super, super plus, and ultra. And it's normal to need different ones through different parts of your period because your flow, i.e. how much is coming out at once, is going to be different throughout the entire week that's going on here. And okay, now I'm at this stage, let me backtrack and say your period itself will only last about three to five days. Longer periods do exist. It can be 10 days. You can be someone that spots sporadically Average is three to five. If something is going outside of that, again, get it checked out. It's not going to be the same for everyone, but it's better to know that that's your normal than to have a problem being um, cropping up. Okay? Okay. 
Secondly, our pads, and they're going to come in not only different absorbencies, but they're also going to have different lengths depending on how much area you want to cover. And you have the option of, pardon me, wings or no wings. Pardon me. I need to. Okay. Did I say that? Wings or no wings? Flying? Hmm. I think so. And there are going to be a couple different options. You can get them generic brands. You can get name brands. And they will come typically individually wrapped so you can carry them with you. And they'll come in a ton of different materials. So, to use, unfold it outwards this way. You'll see this one has wings, so they're folded out of the front here. We're going to leave that there. What you're going to do is typically while sitting on the toilet, so you can change it right in the bathroom. Your britches will be down. Legs will be in there. So you'll be able to see the inside of your panties. Panties. What a weird word. I've tried to think of another word for that, and I kept getting stuck. So, and you're going to center, sorry, this section here. This middle section where the wings are, if you have wings, if not, most will have a circle for where the center is. Um, otherwise, if it is a short pad, it'll be about this length, and you'll just center it. If it's a long one, you're going to just center this wings portion. With the inside of your underwear, there will be a little placket here that makes up the crotch. You will peel it from its background. It's sticky, and you will line it into the crotch. After that, you peel off these sides, which will wrap the wings around it. You see that there are a lot of different details, which do vary upon all different pads. And you don't have to choose just out of the gates which kind you want to use. You can try out a few different kinds, see which covers work for you, make sure you're not allergic to any of them. And there are one more product that kind of ties in the pads, but it's kind of different because you can use it throughout your whole cycle. And that are liners. They don't always come individually wrapped. Sometimes they come in big boxes, they'll be packed together, and they are significantly cheaper than pads because they are significantly less absorbent. Oh, that's cute. I don't know about you, but that's freaking cute. And they will go into your underwear the same sort of way. You'll peel them across from the backing and you'll center the center of these directly into your underoos. And you can wear them on their own, on light days when you're spotting, or just as a backup when you're not using, um, a pad but you're using a tampon. Totally brain farted myself there. Um, once you do get more comfortable, you know, you can experiment with other types of devices. There are a ton of different ways to deal with it. And, um, you know, there are quite a few different products that are available for pain, for bloating, and otherwise. Make sure that you talk to a parent or a doctor about trying different things because you don't want to be putting different things into your body without at least making sure that they are safe for you personally. And finally, if anyone complains that you are bitchy, moody, or otherwise, tell them to shove it. Because it's supposed to suck. Don't know why, but by design, it sucks. And you're allowed to experience whatever emotions that you feel. If you feel that all of the feminine hygiene products in this video were provided free of charge by you of Kotex. This video, however, was not sponsored by them. 
they just gave me a lot of free stuff. You can also get a free pack of your own pads, tampons, or liners, or otherwise, by visiting the You by Kotex website. There are a couple different options for you to choose, so you can figure out exactly what kind of protection is the best protection for you. I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you later.